Okay, hey everybody. I'm going to show you how to do some company analysis using profile information from Yahoo Finance. So I started out by just creating this uh, outline of what we're looking for. I used these ones because they seemed interesting to me, but there's a lot of other information that you can pull also. And I'll show you how uh, you can add more things on here if you wanted, or you can add more tickers to this as well. So what we're going to do is for Caterpillar, Amazon, and Pfizer, we're going to get the current price, the beta, the earnings per share, the P.E. ratio, and the market cap for each of those stocks. And it's not very hard to do at all, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along. Uh, first thing I want to do is go up here to, to the Developer tab and click Record a Macro. I'm going to call mine Profile profile Info. And now I have my uh, Visual Basic Editor open on the right so you can watch as I record the macro, everything will fall in right here. Uh, so the first thing after I start recording, I want to go to Data and Get External Data. I'm going to do From Web. Then we go to Yahoo Finance. And sometimes this script error thing comes up. If you just hit yes, it'll. for me it comes up a bunch of times. And then you can get rid of it. So I want to go to Yahoo. Or, Yahoo Finance, I can click any ticker that I want on the left hand side or I can go to quote lookup and type in one specifically. I'm just going to click on the Yahoo ticker because it doesn't really matter for right now. We're going to make it custom uh, in the actual macro itself. And then so you get the profile information and we're going to click on these yellow arrows. Uh, if you don't have them then you might have checked this at some point. This gets rid of them and then adds them back. So we want to click on those yellow arrows and that says to import this data, all the blue highlighted stuff. So from this information we're going to be getting the beta right there, the previous close, PE ratio, earnings per share, market cap. This is all the stuff that we looked at before. And we could also add in the volume, the target estimate, the bid ask spread, anything we want on that too. So I'm going to hit import and I want to go to, I'm going to import it into sheet 2A1 and that will allow us to have kind of this worksheet open for uh, editing and maneuvering data and then when we want to clean it up and put it in the actual location on our table over here we can do that so sheet 2 a1 hit ok and now you can see the text editor over here the v v the VBA editor uh, pulled in that and that says go to this URL get the Yahoo ticker information put it in uh, over here it says put it in sheet 2 a1 so now that's available So that's all I actually need to record. Um, the rest of the information, I, so I go up and I hit stop up there under uh, developer, the same button that used to, that said record, we hit stop. So now I can edit the macro itself. So I'm going to minimize this immediate window a little bit. And so the actual code that we want, we're going to do a loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for every ticker on here, we're going to loop through. And for Caterpillar, we're going to get the price, the beta, the EPS, the PE, and the market cap. Then we're going to do Amazon, we're going to get the price, the beta, so we're going to go one at a time. Then we're going to get Pfizer, and we're going to go each one of these. And so when we do this big block of code right here, that's saying go to sheet two and put in all the information. So the first thing we're going to want to do is bef before we put in that information, we're going to want to go sheet, sheets two, dot cell, we'll start with dot select, and that'll say go to sheet two. And then we'll do cells.clear and that'll erase everything that's currently on there because we don't want to accidentally pull in uh, Caterpillar's data when we're looking for Amazon or Caterpillar's or Amazon's data when we're looking for Pfizer. So this cells.clear under Sheets 2 says go to Sheets 2, uh, then delete everything that's there, then bring in all the data. Right? And then after that, we're going to say, okay, what do we want to import? Well, we're going to be looking for price, beta, EPS, PE, and market cap. So over here I'm going to say price, beta, EPS, PE ratio, and I'm going to say MCAP. And so these are our, um, they're variables, but they're string variables, I guess. Uh, well, actually, they're going to be numbers for the most part. Um, that's a number. This has a letter B in it, but that's okay. So price is going to be cells. Now we need the row and column of the cell. So, so previous close, that's row one, column two, because it's B, right? So one, two. So row one, column two. Two. Then we'll do our beta is 
over here we have beta is six column two, so cells six comma two. EPS doing the exact same thing. We'll do cells fifteen comma two. The PE ratio is cells fourteen comma two, and the market cap is cells thirteen comma two. So now this is saying what we have for price beta, EPS, PE ratio, market cap, and we're assigning values to all of these uh, variables. Now, now that's all under sheets two, right? This is still valid from up here. We're on sheets two the whole time, but now we want to go back to sheets one and put that, that information in there. So now we're going to say whatever we have saved from price what, what our price is, is going to go right here if we're doing Caterpillar, or it's going to go right here if we're doing Amazon. So we need a way to tell the macro, the program, to when we get Caterpillar, put it next to Caterpillar. When we get Amazon, put it next to Amazon. And we're going to do that with a for loop. And so I have another video that explains how to do for loops. I'll put a link over here so you can click on that and see how a for loop works. Um, but basically what we're going to do is for, for n equals, I like to use n. Uh, you can use any letter you want. You can say for i equals or for z or whatever. For n equals, and I'm going to start at 2 because we're using row 2, right? Caterpillar, we're going to start at row 2. 2, 2. And then in order to be able to expand this, if I wanted to add more tickers down here, up in, you know, I can do thousands of tickers if I wanted to. I'm going to say sheets one dot range a1. Now this is saying start at A1, which is currently says ticker, but then we're going to say dot end XL down dot row. Now this says go to range one, go all the way to the bottom, and whatever row you're on is the last number that we're going to do. And so it says start at two, so end starts at two, and it goes all the way to the bottom. And that, in this case, it's four, so it's going to go from n equals two to four. Uh, if I added more things down here, it could go all the way to ten thousand, if I or a hundred thousand, if I wanted it to, if I had enough tickers for that. So that's going to give us bounds on n. So now we go sheets to. Oh, we need to define ticker first. So what is our ticker symbol going to be? How is how is the macro going to know? Because right now I'm having it go pull Yahoo data, but we don't always want Yahoo. We want Caterpillar, Amazon, and, F and Pfizer. So we'll say ticker equals sheets one dot cells, and now we want which row are we in? We're going to be in n, the row number n, comma one. Now for every time we loop in this for loop. It's going to start at 2, so we're going to start at row 2, column 1, that's Caterpillar. Then we're going to go to 3, row 3, column 1, that's Amazon. And then all the way up, in, in this case it's 4, is going to be our last one, and that's Pfizer. But if I keep adding tickers on here, then N will keep going up until as high as I want it to, and it will keep getting the new ticker. Then when it pulls the data, we want to do the same thing we've done in the other macros that we've written. Quote, and, and, quote. And then between the ands, we're going to put ticker. And that's telling the macro to get the data for whatever ticker we put in here. Then, So we're going to go to Sheets 2. We're going to clear the data that's in there, pull the new data for the new ticker that we're looking for. We're going to assign the variables. Then we're going to go back to Sheets 1, and we're going to say cells row n column. And now column 1 is already the ticker. Is column 2 is going to be the price, right? Equals price cells n3 equals our beta cells n oops, n4 equals our earnings per share cells n5 is our PE ratio cells n6 is our market cap and then at the end of a for loop you always have to say next and then whatever variable you're using, we're using n, next n. And that says, now that you've done all that, go to the next n. So we started with 2, now go to 3, do everything, next n. Now go to 4, do everything, next n. 4 is the last one, so it stops. And so then there we have it. And so this will fill in. So if I run this, hopefully it works. 
And there we go. So we have the price, the beta, the EPS, the PE ratio, and the market cap. So that's how you get the data. I'm, this video took a little bit longer than I expected, so I'm going to do a second video with the same information on how to interpret this, inf this information. What does the price, the beta, the EPS, PE ratio, market cap actually mean? So um, I'll probably record it right after this and upload them both at the same time, so maybe I'll put another link in the side so that links to that video so you can see how to interpret this information. But that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, just comment on the video, and thanks for watching.